I'm Han. And I'm Kat on We're Brews and Reviews. In today's video, you should all be very happy to hear, as Catherine sure is, that I read Legend! <laughs> Sorry, I had a dance party on my own when I realised she was reading it, so... <laughs> well, I did it I did it cool, right, because I thought it was Katty's birthday in November and I was like, well, what a perfect way to read The Legend if I wait for that. And then the previous night I finished my other book and then she was like, so what, what are you planning on reading? I was like, yeah, I've got a few books in mind, you know, you know. So I tried to, like, change the topic as soon as possible and then in the morning I had to, like, put on Goodreads that I was reading it and uh, I put it on our Twitter and I was like, I came down in the morning and I was like, happy birthday. I was like, oh, by the way, have you seen her on Twitter? Like, somebody's like, left us a huge comment. Uh, and I was like, you should read it. And she was like, oh, okay. And she saw it and she was like, oh. I'm excited. It was really, it was really well done. It was like, oh, that's such a good present. I'm finally reading it. Sorry, I get very emotional about this book and it made me very, very happy that you finally read it. But the thing so. is, I can see why you'd get emotional because it is great. I really, really enjoyed it. So we thought we'd give you a review because yeah. I read it eventually. Yeah! I did promise, didn't I? I promised you. You did. You it. pinky promised. I did. And I kept this. my pinky promise. I, I, I don't give out pinky promises to break them, so they, they are serious shit. Now, Legend is a book by David Gemmell and people don't talk about it enough, they need to talk about it more because it's great. So the basic premise of this book is that there is a fortress called Drostelnok and it's basically at the only point of entrance into Drenai, which is like a country. So there's a Nadia horde, like which are basically kind of Mongolian warriors. They move a lot. Anyway, they're all trying to attack Drenai. So they have to come through Drostelnok to get into Drenai and invade, basically. And you follow the people who are in Drostelnok, the people who are fighting completely vastly outnumbered by this yeah. massive horde. Think 300, sort of, 300 men against the whole Persian army. Madness. Madness, guys. It's madness. So, yeah, you basically follow the defenders and how they experience the siege of Drostelnok. Now, I love this book so very much. My favourite character of all time is one of the main characters in this book. His name is Drust the Legend. And he is a legend. He is a he legend. He has earned that title. Yes, he has. <laughs> he earned the, the title by, um, when he was younger, he his wife gets kidnapped by slavers and he basically chases her across the world to get her back and save her and like everyone's like oh you're mad you shouldn't do that he literally fights armies to get to her and it is like so beautiful it really is like it's in a different book that whole story so this is why i know a lot more about it than is explained yeah. in this but even in this you're like oh, it's beautiful. like the way he talks about his wife Oh, it's so it's romantic, and he's a sixty-year-old man in this. Yeah, by the unfortunately, way. she's <laughs> she's died. She died. Um, but the way, like, the love he still has for her, mm. it just makes you think, I need that kind of love in my life. Yeah, I need somebody to love me like that. Mm. It's just beautiful. It really is, and it really touches your heart. It does, it? Like, and how you, beautiful it is. Like, it gives him another. Like like aspect, aspect, I suppose, yeah. Yeah, because a lot of it you hear is Drust the warrior, Drust, yeah. he's a fighter, he's gonna, you know, save everybody because he's like this military man, but like nobody sees like Drust with the love. Yeah. The cuteness, because he's very cute. So, yeah. Other main characters, we have Rek, who is known as, well his full name is Regnak, and he is Regnak the Wanderer. He basically wanders around, he was in the army at one point and then he dropped out because he was a bit afraid of himself because he is what is known as a berserker and he goes super mental whenever he fights and doesn't he care. He sounds like a complete beast as well when he fights. Yeah. Like. Basically adrenaline takes over and he yeah. doesn't really notice what he's doing. So he's kind of afraid of himself and he has like nightmares about what he could do and 
he starts off the story basically drinking and like sleeping with people and just doing whatever he wants and then he's going through this forest and he meets this woman called Beret who is like not stereotypically beautiful she is like the sort of woman who is she's wearing full armor silver armor and she is fighting this guy yeah. who's basically trying to mug her and he intervenes and they sort of end up like getting together yeah. really like very quickly it is a little bit insta lovey and it's sort of also not insta lovey it's very hard to explain because yeah. like at this point in time she knows that she is going back to Drosdalnock, which is where her father is the Earl of Bronze, so he's basically in charge of the fortress. So she's definitely going back, and she's going back to die. She knows that. She has basically come out for help. No one tanks it. No, yeah, and she is the sort of person who is a bit Brienne of Tarth. She's sort of like Eowyn from Lord of the Rings. Yes, yeah. And like, she is constantly being told that, you know, she is not beautiful, she is that sort of thing. She isn't like a stereotypically beautiful person. But Wreck, sort of the way his like mind goes from, oh she's like, not the best looking, and then he's like, actually no, she's beautiful underneath like yeah. everything, like she's beautiful as a person, it's like... Oh. I know, it's so cute. <laughs> so even though they like, bam, they're in love, you can forgive it. Yeah. Because it, it feels so real. It does. It really does. And I don't know, there, there are foundations for that love as well, I think. Yeah, you can see how it builds up. Yeah. The, it's cute. They're cute. I like them a lot. Yeah. Rec tags along on Veret's mission and they head off to the to meet the 30. And they're basically warrior priests, which in itself is awesome. Yeah. And they are seers, so they can like get into people's heads, they can like see things really far away that are happening. They Influence can... things and it is really cool because they're not treated they're treated with respect, but they're treated with fear. Yeah. Like most people in this society are afraid of people who are seers, and I think that's quite an interesting way to regard a magic system because you don't like they're not. They're, basically, everyone's afraid of them. Yeah, yeah. Everyone's like, oh my god, you can get in my head. Get out, get out, get out. Yeah. So yeah. Um, one of the main characters that comes in from the thirty is Servitar. He's so cute. He's my, he's one of my favorites. Yeah, he is really awesome. He's yeah. basically, um, he's an albino, he is the strongest of the 30 and he was like cast out by his father as like a child even though he was like a lordling sort of thing. And but it was because sort of, of his yeah, abilities, powers, yeah. yeah. And like people were afraid of him and it's just not very nice. So I feel really sorry for him but yeah. at the same time he's an awesome character. He's so. a badass. They're all pretty bad. They are, they really like, are. Vintar's like this old man and he's yeah. like, I've got my sword and I just kill everybody. And it, like <laughs> when you hear about them in battle, they literally, like, they are weapons. So Vare and Wreck convince the 30 to join them at Drosdalnok. So their storyline takes them on a bit of a let's go yeah. to Drosdalnok because we're gonna help and fight. Meanwhile, Dross, amazing Dross, has walked miles upon miles, yeah. even though he's a 60 year old man with a bad knee, to Dross Delnock and is greeted by a bunch of people shouting his name because they're like, Dross, 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 yes! That's exactly what I want! I want people to be inspired by an old man with a big axe. Yeah. Because, awesome. Exactly. And um, he basically goes in and there's a whole shitstorm of people being incapable of doing things. The leaders are a bit nobody really likes this guy called yeah. Orin because he's but, like the son of like some council man yeah. somewhere else. The Earl's dying isn't he? Like he's yeah. literally on his deathbed like he's dying so I think the whole place has gone into like sort of disarray hasn't it? And I think that's gonna why. Die. Yeah. <laughs> We're all gonna die. And um, because they know they are vastly outnumbered mm -hmm. I think like defeat's setting into them mm -hmm. so that's why Dross coming into a place like this is just so great. Yeah and he basically like sets in motion a whole chain of events that give people the opportunity to believe that they can win, that they are not going to be defeated. They might be defeated, possibility is that most of them are going to die, but he puts it into their head that they stand a chance, yeah. that they can do something that matters, and yeah. it is like, it's just incredibly well done. It is. Like, it's, it's such a big build up to the actual battle that happens, and 
Let me tell you about Dross Dalnark itself, because Dross Dalnark is a very interesting fortress. It has six walls. Each of them have different names which mean different things. So like the first but the first wall is called Eldabar and that is like massive yeah. and it is is the it's biggest their wall. main defence, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. They have a problem with Eldabar because they don't have enough men to constantly man it because it's so big. And then you've got the second wall, which is a bit behind. So if you abandon the first wall, then there's like a killing ground in the middle. And this basically continues. There's six different walls and one of them means like hope, one of them means like death. Yeah. Like basically if you get to that wall, probably yeah. not make it. <laughs> it's very interesting how their defences go and the different levels of how people react to situations yeah. in those things. And you've also got like side storylines about like random soldiers who are just like farmers that volunteered to yeah. help and different things like that. And it, it's really interesting to see how this war, war is affecting them. them. Yeah. The way that David Gemmell writes a battle, writes a war, is phenomenal. Uh, it, it was generally, like I was there in front of it, I could see everything. Mm -hmm. Like, on every single wall, I could, literally, it was like I could see the world. It's like you're watching a movie, isn't it? Yeah, like, yeah. The way that he describes things, it is just definitely so clear. Like, I can picture it now, like, yeah. you know, just in my well, head. All I remember is like you and your dad saying, like when, when you were trying to, you know, convince me to, to read it, you were both saying, I can see it. I, like, and you could t like talk about what was happening. Mm -hmm. And I got that. And yeah. I'm so happy I did. It's, it's just so involving. It's so well done. And you're like so invested in every single character and every single storyline that's happening, even if they're only in it a tiny little bit. Yeah. We haven't spoken about Hannah's other favourite character yet. Uh, okay, so <laughs> my other favourite character is Bowman. And you meet Bowman when Dross is making his way to Dross Dalnock. And so he's walking through all these forests and he knows that there are people in these forests and he knows he's going to get attacked sort of, I suppose. But this is exactly what he wants. It's his plan all along because he sort of tricks them, convinces them into joining the battle. And, you know, he promises them that once they get, I think it's the third the wall. The third wall, yeah. Once that, the third wall falls, yeah, they can leave. Yeah, but I mean, they're they are, um, the outlaws. yeah, the outlaws. So another promise that Justice made them is that they can be pardoned. You know, they will leave once the third wall is breached. You know, as free men, I suppose. You yeah, know, they, they don't, don't have, have to, to hide. worry. Yeah, they can live a normal life without having to fear you know capture and stuff like that i suppose yeah. but so you, you you know these people as oh well they're just going to be outlaws that they're, they're just going to make a run for it as soon as the danger hits but it's so not like that no. a lot of them do and you can understand why but most a lot of people go that yeah. were there anyway because yeah. they've, but they've been given that opportunity you know rec knows that chances are yeah and he what that's what I like about it. They don't hold it against them. They are like, listen, you have fought such a great battle. If you want to leave, hold your heads high and you leave. You mm -hmm. know. And I like how they're so accepting. But Bowman completely has a change of heart, and I think it's so lovely to see such a character development. And uh, he has Bowman a space. Is... He generally has a space in my heart. Like he's my favorite throughout the whole of it. Yeah. I just had a huge connect, like even, even as the outlaw in the far forest, for some reason he stood out to me. Yeah, because he just does, he's yeah. just that sort of character that's very like personable and he's kind of funny and yeah. he, like yeah. witty and yeah. He's but then cute. like you find out about his backstory and why he is, how he is and I don't know, he's <laughs> just, I think he's a very well written character. He stays to the end and you know, he's brilliant, he really is, yeah. There's not really much I can say about him, I just love him. Yeah. So another interesting thing that happens in this book is the villain, who is Ulrich. He is basically the Khan of the Nadia. He's basically Genghis Khan. Like, if I'm trying to picture some, describe it in a way, I'll describe him as Genghis Khan because it's kind of the easiest way <laughs> to do that. Except there's a lot of respect in him. Like, there's this one point in time where Dress and Ulrich, like, parlay with each other and they just go and have a picnic in the middle of the killing ground. Like, I thought that was such a great moment. Like, yeah, because they just having a conversation with each other. Yeah. He's like, yeah, sorry, you're going to die. And the other one's like, well, yeah, sorry, I'm going to have to kill you as well. Yeah. And it's like, well, 
But what I liked about it is that they were both appreciative of each other. Like, yeah. Josh was like, do you know what? I admire you. Like, mm. for what you have done, like, basically, I take my hat off to you. Like, mm. he, he, he knows that Ulrich is a force to be reckoned with. But that doesn't mean he's going to give in. Like, yeah. he, know, he, he, I think, just knows in his heart parts that Joss Anlock is going to be taken. But he's not going to let it go without a fight. And he, he lets Ulrich know that he will do whatever is in his power yeah. to defend that castle. Like, yeah. completely. Do you know what, though? Like, I know he's the opposing force. However, I don't particularly see him as a buddy. No, it's interesting, because, isn't it? Like, he, he's doing what he believes in. And it's not particularly, like... I, I, I don't see him as nasty. Yeah. I, I, I don't know if I particularly agree with him. I think he goes maybe about <laughs> things the wrong way. However, I don't see him as a buddy. No, he doesn't come across as like a villain. He's not vindictive. He's no. not like, ha ha ha, I'm striking my cat here. Yeah. Like, Meh. It's, he's like doing something that his cause believes in and yeah. that his people believe in as well. And you can kind of see it from both points of view, even though yeah. you really don't want him to win because yeah. please don't kill everyone that I love. <laughs> Which, unfortunately, does happen. Well, not everybody well, dies. Not, no, not everybody. But I mean, given that this is a siege in which most, like, the majority of the people that are defending it are gonna die. It's just this heartbreaking section in it that every single time I read it, rips my heart out. Like, I'm just, it makes me so sad. I cry every single time I read it. I'm not ashamed of that. It's a very beautiful moment. It's it's very sad, but it's got so much power behind it. Like, just, like, when when the people that you love die in this book, it, like, because it happens multiple times. It, it really You're, like, does. hit with it, and then it comes out, you're good, and good, and good, and it's like... Yeah. <sighs> Sorry, I'm not violent, really. <laughs> it's... It is very hard to have spent that time with these people and that believing that, yes, they have a chance because you have built yourself up to have that hope as well and then some of them die and you're like... <laughs> yeah. I think what makes it easy is that they know. They know. They, They've they accepted know. it already. And yeah, the, the, still. I, I think that's what makes their death so beautiful is because they're still doing it. They, they are fighting for what they believe in. Yeah. <sighs> Like, I'm really them. sad now. I'm not really sad. I know, thinking about it, like, I'm thinking about it, it's like, oh. Yeah. Like, I'm really sad about it. I'm not going to cry because. So, um, we should probably finish this review now that I've, like, turned the sadness on. <laughs> this book just, apart from that bit, makes me incredibly happy. It is so well written. It is the sort of thing that makes you want to believe that people can do anything. Yeah. And definitely. Honestly, if you've not read this book and you've just enjoyed our spoilers, all of the spoilers, yeah, then please, please do read it. It is so worth reading. It is a heroic fantasy that I think more people need to know about. And like, you might be like, oh, I don't know, at the beginning, and then when you get into it, because even I was like that, you yeah. know. Like, to be fair, like, I, I had to ask you about a lot of things. I was a bit unsure, you know. I was like, so, you know, who is this? What what, what does it all mean? Like, blah, 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 blah. But I think I think if I had just waited, I would have understood it anyway. Oh, yeah. Like, I think with me, sometimes I panic that I'm, you know, especially with such a book, like, yeah. I wanted to love it. And I was like, oh, my God, like, what about if I don't? So I think that's why I wanted a little bit more understanding, probably a lot bit earlier than what I needed it. But yeah. either way, like, it was great. Yeah, I'm so glad you read it and I'm so glad you liked it. And I think the rest of you should read this book because... Even I think the rest of you should read this book. So we hope you've enjoyed this little review discussion that has been a long, long <laughs> time coming. And we'll see you in the next video. See you later. Bye.